So this video is uh, to explain how to do graphs in Excel and I already have some data here. Um, it's the area of Arctic sea ice for uh, each number is a different year. So I'm just going to, it doesn't matter what your data is, but I'm just going to select it here, just the numbers, and I'm going to click on uh, chart words. You can also do it under um, insert chart, but I'm going to do it by clicking on the shortcut button up here, chart wizard, and then I'm going to go to line, and I choose this one, and I click next, and there, I'm done. This could be the end of the video. You click finish, and you'd have that nice chart there. But um, there's a few more things we could do, like this down here, we, I really want the year down here. So I'm going to hit cancel, and let's type year. And I forget when this data started, but it ended in um, 2006. So I'm gonna, and this one was 2005. And now Excel can determine the pattern. I can just click on this little low right hand corner and drag, and it'll see the pattern and it'll continue it. So I just want to go up here. Already it's saying, oh, 2004, right? 2003, right? And I say, yeah, yeah. So I drag up here, let go, and there we have it. We've got all our years perfectly. So Excel will look for a pattern. There's all kinds of patterns that Excel can recognize. And you just click on this thing in the corner and drag, and it'll take care of that for you. Um, and now this number here, 22,000, that's in pixels. I really want it in square kilometers. And I happen to know that there's 625 square kilometers per pixel. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to say star A2. So the equals means a formula is coming up. The 625 uh, means 625, the star means times, and A2 means this cell over here. This is cell A2. Okay, and there's the formula, and so it did it. Well, did the multiplication. Ah, oh, but it's 14 million. That's too big. So let's um, let's divide by a million. One, one, one. Oh, oh, oh. Because that's just too big of a number for people's brains to deal with. Too many, too many digits. And I'm going to say million square kilometers. Um, and there, 14, much better. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it into all these cells down here. Paste. And there, it looks great. And actually, I think I'd like to format this, although if you're just doing a graph and nobody's going to see these numbers, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to say number, and I'm going to say two decimal places. Say OK. Now it looks nicer. Um, we didn't have to do that for graphing purposes, just if you're going to print this data out. So here's the data we want to graph. And this is going to be our x-axis. This is going to be a y-axis. Actually, I'm going to select even this text at the top. Excel graphing often does really well with, with labels, too. Um, and if it doesn't, we can always start over. So we're going to graph this, and we're going to use an xy graph. Where the, the year is going to be the x-axis, and this uh, kilometers of Arctic ice will be the y-axis. So hit Chart Wizard. And so now, instead of doing a line graph, we're going to do an xy scatter. And I don't like this curvy one. I like the straight line version. So I'm going to click Next, and there it is. It's beautiful. Um, here, I'll click Next, and you can see that you can type in a, a title, like uh, Arctic Sea Ice. Um, you could say that the uh, X value is the year, if you want. Next. And a lot of people like to click New Sheet, um, and you get a nice big graph, and you can print it out, be full page paper. But I'm just going to say, I'm just going to take the default here. I usually don't even type any of this stuff. I usually just click finish and then I edit it later. So here it is. Arctic sea ice. Year. Ah, oh, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Million square kilometers. I think I'd get rid of this. You can just click this and delete it if you want and you can change the title to, you know, mention that it's in millions of millions square kilometer. You can put it up there instead, I guess. Um, now, the first time I did this graph, I'm going to make it a little smaller here. The first time I did this graph, it looked a little different. I'm just going to quickly show you what it looked like. I did this on somebody else's computer once, and it, we'll come back to this in a sec. And it looked like this. And notice how there's a huge gap down here, and it's really hard to see the trend. The trend's not as obvious as it was a few seconds ago. So what I really the problem is is that it's using this zero value. So if you see if you get this when you do your Excel plot but you don't want to have all this blank space down here, what you need to do is change the Y minimum to a higher value. I see this all the time on other versions of Excel. So we could change to 12, 
um, or 13, or I can put the mouse over here and I can see, oh, it's 13.32, that point. So I could even go as high as 13. Let's go to 13. So I'm going to right click on here. If you have a, if you have a um, Macintosh, you do control mouse click, unless you have a two button ma mouse on your Mac. But if you have a one button mouse on your Macintosh, you want to do control click. Um, our PC people do right click. I'm going to say format access. And Normally, by default, this says auto, and it's supposed to pick a value, but some versions of Excel always pick zero. I don't know why. So I'm going to instead, even if you get checked, if you type a value here, it'll uncheck it for you, because it's saying I'm saying I want 13 to be the minimum. I click OK, and there, 13 is our minimum. And now you can really see the trend nicely. Um, in fact, you, this, this can um, be a little deceptive. If people think this is zero, they might think, oh, it looks like there will be zero Arctic ice in the year 2000 seven and a half, two thousand eight, something like that. Well that's obviously not true because it's already two thousand eight and there's still Arctic ice. Well what they don't see is the bottom's thirteen. Yeah, maybe there's gonna be thirteen million square kilometers. But zero is way down down there somewhere. You can fake people out even worse by uh here make this minimum uh fourteen say. <laughs> now the chart goes off the scale. Or make it uh thirteen and a half, let's do because it went down to 13.3, so let's try 13.5. There, now you say, oh, the chart's off the graph. Literally, it's off the, the it's, uh, it's off the chart. The graph goes off the chart. Um, so this wouldn't be a very good, good idea. So there you have it. This is good for uh, XY plots, and I showed you briefly uh, simpler plots. Um, let me show you an even simpler one. Let's just do, uh, let's say, um, Ann, uh, Beth, um, Clara. And let's say Ann sells, makes three houses, sells three houses, Beth sells five, and Clara sells three. We could select this and we could do a plot of this data. So basically, if anything, you can select the data on the screen. Often it's really easy to plot. So let's try the very first plot column next. And there you get a plot like that. If I click finish, it'll look like that, but bigger. Or um, we could do um, a line graph. It wouldn't be really appropriate. A pie graph would be appropriate for this kind of thing. And you can see how clearly how Beth is making the most sales here. And you can do 3D plots also. Anyway, play with it.